Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundforks. This is episode 72 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in previous episodes we have been doing some launches, some stuff. This time it's not really related to anything, I just wanted to make something cool. So, and I have decided to make a big SSTO that would be using the OPT uh, package. We have in previous episode, thankfully to the Quarks experiment and some EVE science before that, unlocked some cool parts that were some space plane adapters and some more advanced cockpits. So this time I'm just wanting to design an SSTO that would be a heavy SSTO based on this technology. <clears throat> so let's see if we do have what it takes to actually construct such a big SSTO. Uh, it, I don't have any specific payload in mind yet. I'm sure I will in the future, but this is just more, let's say, uh, proof of concept, so to say. So I'm using um, OPT. I will put the link in the description of the video and I'm putting um, yeah orbital portal technologies I think it's K um, K cockpit and then uh, yeah K fuselage followed by J <coughs> rear end so let's see how will we tie these together this is by the way first time I'm actually constructing um, using the K cockpit from the OPT so yeah if my design turns out to be ridiculous well don't judge me so let's see um, if we can put two of these here at the rear so I'm thinking I do want to have a lot of rapiers but also want to have like at least four nukes because these guys give the the bigger delta v i mean they're to be used while out of the atmosphere only in orbit and i'm now trying to add other engines to help me get to the orbit so my thrust to weight is 0 0.77 but i do want to separate in terms of using um in terms of using uh, I don't want to use nukes for ascent, bottom line. So I'm just kind of looking various designs to see which one would look nice, look cool and you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm now trying to go with the sabers, see if uh, uh, the sabers will give me better thrust to weight and I think they will. So I'm just now looking how I would best utilize sabers. Um, yeah, maybe something along those lines. And then for this extra push, I'm using this big <clears throat> heavy engines at the rear and the, which are basically also coming from, I think those are from Mark IV system, I'm not sure. So yeah, Sabres, which are a part of B9 package and uh, just setting now their modes. I've put one to switch the mode on all of them, two to toggle them, like four to toggle atomic and maybe six to toggle cargo bay or intakes, yeah. So <clears throat> this is pretty much work in progress, so I'm just now experimenting how this would look. I wanted to post this kind of a video so that you could guys basically see me designing an experimental shuttle and... Um, yeah. So I'm just now trying to see, I mean, wings wise, what would it look like? Mm, yeah, I don't like the design. I prefer using delta wings. Well, what can you say? What can you do? So, <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this design much more, actually. <clears throat> yes, much, much more. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we definitely don't want something like that. So let's just see. I mean, thrust to weight is 0 0.77, but it's still using nukes. So that concerns me a little bit. But let us first finish the design and see how we will adapt to use it. And this is, remember, without the payload, because the payload is empty cargo bay at the moment. So I think I'll need to spruce up our thrust to weight. Working on the wings. By the way, for you who might be interested, this is the procedural wings, not the B9 procedural wings, but the procedural dynamics procedural wing mod. But this is 0 0.90, so I don't believe that this mod got updated for the 1.0 something track, so yeah. Okay, I'm just lining up the intakes. Okay, and I want to be putting something in the cargo bay. So I was thinking I should be putting a small SSTO. I mean, the idea was that this guy should be have enough thrust to weight, enough storage space to transfer a smaller, well, not SSTO, but a smaller space plane that would be able to go to, I don't know, Minmus or somewhere else. So I'm trying now hard just to add all the components that I need without too much affecting the uh, the cargo space. So yeah, lights, batteries, also two RTGs. We want to be putting those here. And then let's see, I'm thinking about putting a decoupler or not decoupler, but docking port. And I want to be putting now a smaller inline cockpit. So something like like that. Then um, a small um, rocket fuel tank and uh, probably uh, some small engine, rocket engine. Let's see what do we got. This one. Yeah, this could, this would work. Oh, too big of a wing. Let's see something smaller. <laughs> it's kind of hard. I'm looking just to find the right size. I think I'll also be build a procedural one for this one, I guess. It'll have to be really tiny, though. Something along these lines. <clears throat> and some tailplane. Hmm. <laughs> I don't believe I do have this such small tail plane, so I might actually need... I'm also thinking that I might need to put some landing struts, because I do expect that this one would be landing vertically. Everywhere I expect carbon, except carbon. So, and I think I've goofed up a little bit, so I'm now putting the SAS, and now I don't think I have any more space at the back. Oh man, yeah, I was thinking something smaller in terms of reaction wheels, but I guess not. Okay, let's leave it as is and let us construct a tailplane, once again using procedural wings. I mean, as I said, this is highly experimental craft, so what can you do? And it's very asymmetric, so which I'm pretty sure I will pay later at takeoff and landing. So putting here landing gear, of course, adjustable landing gear. Huh. I think this will be crazy. Let's see. I have no idea, by the way, guys, if this will fly at all, how it will fly, how it will behave. I have no idea. It's just something crazy for a change. Okay, and some food cans, and I'm thinking maybe, do I need batteries? Maybe I, I might need batteries on this one. Parachutes, well, 
Mm, these should better go in a separate stage, right? And yeah. Oops. My wing tips fell off. Hmm. Much better. Let's close the bay doors and put some tail planes on this big bad boy. So. <clears throat> Let's put some canards in front. Do I need something bigger? Maybe I will need something bigger. Tails, twin tails, or quadruple tails for extra stability. And uh, I was thinking about the bigger tail planes than that. Yeah, so I think I will actually use these ones instead. Just move a little bit forward, making sure they just control the yaw. And then the forward ones obviously pitch and your pitch and the roll, obviously. So yeah. Let's just now put the staging correctly. And that brings our thrust to weight to abysmally low 0 0.53. Which is the ballpark where I always play with. I don't know why. And I wanted to also remove the engine from the small inner plane, so I'm decided to add two more of um, two more sabers instead of the because the sabers have higher thrust on the in the atmosphere, <coughs> and it's in atmosphere thrust that is giving me headache at the moment. So, adding some air brakes. Mm, setting air brakes to a um, custom action group. Okay, and let's think about it. What else do we need? We need control surfaces at the back of this plane's wings. I mean, main wings. So, yes, <clears throat> we want control surfaces here, so let's just play with them a little bit. And usually when I'm extending these, I also modify the wings, which I typically try not to, but I ended up doing anyway. And at this point my game crashed, so I just reloaded and make sure <clears throat> I added, I think, the wheels, and that was it. So, yes, let us do the simulation. Okay, thrust to weight. Retract the rear landing gear just to make sure that one is being used, that we don't bump the engines on uh, landings. Takeoff so far seems okay. Thrust to weight abysmally low, like I said before, but still it works so yeah <clears throat> I don't know maybe this could work and I'm thinking am I using rapiers yeah I think I'm using rapiers at the back <clears throat> two rapiers beside six sabers and four nukes well so far it seems Pretty stable. Thrust weight on the lowish side though. And yeah. Well, <clears throat> its main mission is to get this little guy into the orbit. I mean, if we manage to get an orbit on this one, I would be consider this design a success. And in that case, we only need some refinements. So yeah. A little bit shaky there and there, but all in all, still pretty viable. Its acceleration is something to be desired, and but it's improving as the fuel is being drained. So, yeah. Ultimately, all I care is if it gets the job done.
Let's put the lights on. Passing over 600 meters per second mark. And we are at 15,000 meters. The air should be thinner. Our intake air usage seems to be quite good, <laughs> which means we have plenty of intake air still. And I'm hoping that the ceiling for this craft would be around, I don't know, 28, maybe 30,000 meters. <laughs> and if that's the case, then we would have some viable uh, viable alternative for an SSTO because we would be able to go in such thin atmosphere to have to significantly accelerate so now we are around 800 meters per second so actually it's performing better than I expected I was worrying that my thrust weight would be too low just to, for this flight to even be viable but yeah kicking in the nukes to help a little bit in terms of pushing and turning them off again my engines are starting to overheat I'm not yet sure which ones but twenty six thousand meters and I intake air usage is only at twelve percent this is actually quite promising I'm trying to go as fast as I possibly can while still maintaining the ascent angle at around ten percent I or ten above the horizon and I am pitching pretty high up but my angle of attack is actually pretty steep, so... <clears throat> yeah. Still my apoapsis is climbing and... I've kicked in the nukes and I've kicked in... Uh, the mode on everything but the rapiers. So now I switch the rapiers also to close cycle and we are thrusting... Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I forgot, by the way, that I shouldn't be thrusting as hard on the rapiers because they do tend to overheat pretty quickly. Anyway, our apoapsis is at 90, uh, 90 kilometers, so I decided just to kill the sabers to save on the Delta V and just circularize using nukes. It will be a little bit longer circularization, but I think it should be working quite okay and we have a beautiful moonrise screenshot ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> okay <clears throat> circularizing opening our cargo bay checking that that works perfect and basically we should have plenty of plenty of Delta V to be able to circularize and this is what I was hoping if we have enough Delta V I might considering that this SSTO might be even capable of going to Moon and Minmus maybe not land that's the small one is for but enough to go there at least so okay <clears throat> let's see and ladies and gentlemen we have an orbit perfect so let us decouple the small SSTO or the more the small space plane like I said, I didn't really thought this through, so I don't have RCS, and it's highly experimental design, so I'm actually just now kicking it out of the atmosphere by the reaction wheels on the bigger SSTO. <coughs> Close the, the cargo bay. And perfect, so I now switch to it, but then again, I have no control over, over it. And why? Well, I have no Kerbals on board. So let's take one of our brave Kerbals and let him 
get in. And come on, stop fiddling around. RTG has aged. Yeah, I think decoupling was actually a bad idea. I should have first put my Kerbal in and then decoupled. But what can you do? That is actually, guys, why this is not an episode of uh, Ground Forks Engineering, because I only tend to showcase my successful designs there. So, and perfect. Oh, and, well, crap. Actually, guys, um, I forgot that to de disable the draining on this wine. So, yeah. Well, moving on, let's close up on our curb and Eve window. And at a later stage, by the way, guys, I will be <coughs> fixing this craft. So I just need to modify and tweak it a little bit. But since this craft, this episode was mostly designing, I really want to actually launch something. And our Curb into Eve window coming closer, I do want to launch the Eve Advanced Lander, I guess. It's on the pad, and let's put Mike J. Kerman as a pilot. So, Mike, you're going to go to Eve. I hope you like it. So, without further ado, let's launch Mike. Three, two, one, launch. Well, not the best countdown, but then again, guys, this is post commentary. Please don't judge me. Well, <clears throat> pretty much standard launch, nothing really special to report. Here, just uh, ascending ever so carefully. And, uh, yeah. First booster stage separation successful. <laughs> Passing 15,000 meters. Our apps is steadily climbing. And as you can see, I mean, I have more than enough Delta V <coughs> on this lander. And uh, the reason is that this lander, together with its middle stack, should go to EVE. Because on the middle stack I have a metric crap ton of life support supplies, which should hopefully eliminate the need for me to go docking to the, I guess, uh, EVE orbital station. But then again, I don't think, by the way, this guy would be landing on EVE, but it should be able to perform. And at this point, my light start to blinking on the lander. I don't know why. It's in some new bug that I yet haven't encountered. But guys, the moment I circularize, I think I'm going to call this an episode. So I'm not switching deliberately to the lander, not to invoke the bug. And I think I'm more or less there. I just need to fix my... <clears throat> periapsis a little bit yeah as you can see it's still present so sorry about that I'm just now slowly turning myself and I will be performing this uh, burn and uh, yeah, I guess uh, thank you very much guys for watching. Like if you like and hit subscribe button for more KSC content that should be coming soon. Thanks again and this is Groundforks signing off.